good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you are watching this training. You are watching this training video because you have been selected by your County 4-H agent to serve as your county's 4-H Healthy Living Ambassador. The term you will serve is from June 1, 2018 to May 31, 2019. I am excited that you are getting this opportunity and I look forward to seeing and hearing all of the great work you will do this coming year to promote healthy living in your county. This online video takes the place of a statewide training. Given the year, it depends on if we are able to offer a face-to-face -face training or online training. This will be the first video you will watch to get you started in your new role. As we have updates, I will send other trainings and resources to you and your 4-H agent's email. My name is Shelby Bronner and I am an Extension Assistant in the State 4-H office in Knoxville. I currently oversee our Healthy Living grants and some of the programs that go along with that, which is the reason I am here, to help promote healthy living across our state, which is the same as you. I apologize about my raspy voice, so just bear with me as you watch this video. So let's go ahead and dive in. A little bit of an overview of what you can expect from this video. This presentation will talk about the need of the healthy living programs in our counties in Tennessee, the history of the ambassador program, the requirements, funding, and expectations of this program and then I'll have some follow-up information at the very end. So in terms of need, you can see some of these statistics. Feel free to utilize these statistics. These came from the Risk Behaviors of Tennessee Youth Survey. There are additional resources you can use to get the needed broke down for your county specifically. Before you do that and share it with the public, please be sure to check with your 4-H agent because they may have some other reports from places like the Annie E. Casey Foundation as they share information in terms of what they are doing in their other programming efforts. So it is important to talk to them to ensure you are getting the most up-to-date information for your county. Before we talk about this data, so you understand, whenever it says youth, that means a person under the age of 18. But you can see here statewide, at least as current as 2015, 29% of our youth drink at least one soft drink per day. And even more so, 9.7% drink three or more soft drinks per day. Now keep in mind this information is self-reported, so the survey was given to the young person and they were the ones who indicated yes or no to the questions that were asked. So sometimes that's hard to measure because you're not sure if somebody is trying to be funny or just mark whatever, but we have to take this at face value and just assume that this data is accurate. So 9.7% of these youth indicated that they didn't eat vegetables at all. And then 26.6% of these youth did not drink milk at all. These are all pretty astounding numbers. Additional data related to physical activity and exercise. 43.4% of youth are on the computer or playing video games for three or more hours per day. Now that might not sound like a lot of time, but these youth are coming home from the school day around 4 p.m. and sitting in front of a screen until 7 p.m. or later after they have most likely sat at school all day. They are not outside playing, exercising, or interacting with their families. And then 74.1% of youth um, indicated they were not physically active for at least 60 minutes per day. So you can easily see the youth in our state are not getting enough physical activity in their daily lives. Although we mentioned vegetable consumption on the pa past slide, here is another perspective to look at. 45.9% of youth consume vegetables less than one time per day. 45.4% of youth consume fruit less than one time per day. 
I think this is a great starting point for you to begin thinking how you can use your role to make a positive influence on youth in your county to eat more fruits and vegetables. Think of creative ways that you could do this and make it fun. Lastly, if you don't already know, Tennessee is the first in the nation for youth obesity. 38.4% of youth in Tennessee are overweight or obese. The national average is 20.6%. So we are way past that national average. And we have got to get moving. So a few statistics uh, related to tobacco and alcohol consumption. 36.1% of youth have smoked cigarettes at least once in their life. 41.6% have used uh, e-vapor products. 60.6% of youth have tried alcohol. And currently, 21.7% of youth use some form of tobacco on a daily basis, whether it's cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, or something else. We have the Health Rocks curriculum that has great lessons about the importance of not using drugs and alcohol. So if you want to lead a lesson or a workshop on these topics and need some help, please reach out and let me know. I will be happy to help you. A little bit about this program. It began in the 2012-2013 school year, and it started as an initial partnership with United Healthcare, and they wanted to support a program like this for teens. United Healthcare, for the most part, funds our 4-H Healthy Living Ambassador program. And if you're not familiar, United Healthcare is a company who offers health insurance to individuals across our state. They are really an engaged partner with Tennessee 4-H. So let's talk about the funding for this program. Obviously, we're not going to have a face-to-face training this year. But when we do, um, these trainings are often funded by United Healthcare, And the Healthy Living Ambassador might invest $20 or so for the two- to three-day event uh, just to help us cut down on expenses. But of course, since this is online, there is no cost, which is what we are offering this year. You will also receive a polo shirt. Uh, They will be sent out to you towards the end of this week along with the rest of your materials. Uh, You should wear this shirt at all of your 4-H Healthy Living events. Now this doesn't mean that you have to wear it every single day. You can mix it up and wear a different shirt. That's perfectly fine. But these are good opportunities for you to promote the program. This shirt and your other materials should arrive to you within the next week or so. So be on the lookout. When this program started in 2012, each county in Tennessee received an Xbox 360 Connect projector, speaker, and games through funding by United Healthcare. Please use these. That's what they're there for. Ask your 4-H agent about them, and I'm sure they can point you in the right direction. This is a great way to teach young people about physical activity in a fun way. Please know that we cannot control what songs might be on the dancing games. So before you teach your lesson, you might want to go through and screen them first so that way you know if there's an inappropriate song that you may need to skip. Opportunities for resources at your county office can include um, the programs such as FNEP or TINSEP, which is SNAP-Ed, through your FCS agent. You can go in and work with those individuals um, and see what's going on in their serving youth. Not every county has these programs, but you can go in and help teach or lead uh, the programs that are going on if you have it in your county. For H Healthy Living grants, we award a lot of funding across the state um, related to healthy living, such as Health Rocks, which is focused on alcohol, tobacco, and substance abuse prevention. Then 
Walmart Healthy Habits, which is funded through the Walmart Foundation, and this focuses on nutrition, education, and physical activity. And then our other grant is Food Smart Families, which is funded through United Healthcare and focuses on nutrition and getting families involved in meal preparation and sharing a meal together. And then also, <coughs> if your county has one of these grants, uh, reach out to your agent and ask how you could help implement the programs or what you could do to support them. If your county does not have one of these grants, maybe you can be the encouragement they need to apply for it next year. And then any county resources, things that your agent might already have in their office, such as curriculum or other educational materials or manipulatives that you could borrow um, with your 4-H agent's approval, of course, that would help you better deliver your program. So as you think about your 4-H involvement and why you chose to be a 4-H Healthy Living Ambassador, I know many of you perhaps are involved in the Nutrition, Health, and Fitness Project, but many of you aren't, and that is perfectly fine. Maybe you're in the Beef Project, or Photography, or Line and Design, or something else. But all of the projects you're involved with have a citizenship and leadership component. So as you are planning your activities and working around healthy living, I want you to think about the leadership skills that you are developing through all of the planning and thought processes you do as well as the citizenship opportunities available. And so think of it in terms of that and the opportunities you have to advance your leadership and maybe even the leadership of others around you. And also to provide opportunities around citizenship Maybe it's a service project related to food security, or maybe you are going to speak to senior citizen groups or special needs audiences about the importance of healthy living. You are not only advancing the healthy living piece of it, but your citizenship as well. So let's talk about the requirements of this program. So obviously if you are reading this, these requirements fit you. You fall into this criteria. You are appointed by your county 4-H agent. In the past, we have only had one ambassador per county, but due to the needs of counties, we have opened up the opportunity to have anywhere from one to five healthy living ambassadors per county to better serve the audiences. Your county 4-H agent is the one who gets to decide how many ambassadors they want to serve the county. So you may be the only one or there may be a team of you. <clears throat> so to serve in this role, you should be an active 4-H member in grades 9 through 11 as of January 1, 2018. Hopefully, you're a teen who is interested in helping others become healthier. And then you are in any 4-H project, not just nutrition, health, and fitness. Just because you are in the horse project does not mean that you cannot be an extremely engaged healthy living ambassador. The work that we ask for you to do this term is to get with your county 4-H agent and or family consumer science agent to collaborate on programming efforts that are currently taking place in your county. They have lots of activities going on. They are doing health fairs, programming with school children, such as doing lessons on nutrition education, and setting up exhibits, or whatever the case may be. Your job is to work with them first and foremost to collaborate on programming. I do not want you going out here creating your own opportunity that is not in line with what is, what, what is going on in the county. Now this does not mean that you cannot create your own opportunity, but you should be having that conversation with your 4-H agent on a regular basis. Because what I don't want you to do is go out here and not speak with your 4-H agent and then you are speaking on behalf of the University of Tennessee Extension and that doesn't make us look good. You need to be communicating with your 4-H agent to make sure you are on the same page. And again, this can be in any area related to healthy living. Um, other topics that come to mind for healthy living are things like nutrition, physical activity, substance abuse prevention, mental health, social health, and others.
And then in addition to the teaching roles, you are going to serve as an advocate for healthy living wherever you go. That could be like speaking at civic clubs, FCE, and school-related meetings. So for example, your 4-H agent calls and says the Ruritan Club wants you to come speak on Thursday night about healthy living. You don't have to do an activity per se with them, but just talk about what you're doing in your county to address healthy living. And so rather than maybe doing an hour-long presentation or activity, this might be a 10-minute presentation <clears throat> where you make a PowerPoint, or maybe not. So you could talk about how you're working with the 4-H Health Rocks program or the Food Smart Families program which these are grant funded projects or maybe you're working with a 10 set person and talking about how 4-H is partnering with them. So anytime that you can be an advocate for the program this is what I'm talking about here. Each time you speak to a group or do an activity there is a report form you will fill out. This report is simple. It asks your name, county, how many people you spoke to, if your audience included adults or 4-H members, the day you did this, a short description of what you did, and some pictures. Be sure to set aside five minutes at the end of your program to complete it so it's fresh on your mind and you can quickly knock it out. We give away prizes from time to time, but in order to be eligible to win, you must complete the report form. We have given out Amazon gift cards, iPods, Fitbits, and lots of other different types of things. So be sure to do this at report every time you do something. These reports are to provide your county agents and stakeholders around our state to show the great things we have going on. You can see the link here on the slide that begins with the HTTPS, but it's rather long. Um, the link below it that reads 2018-2019 HLA work is the same survey link. So when you see that in an email from me, just click on it and it takes you right to the online form. As an ambassador, certainly our expectation is that you find groups to reach out to. Work with your 4-H agent. These can be youth or adult groups like family and community education clubs. Talk with your FCS agent as this is the group they work directly with. Um, other clubs like Rotary and Raritan, Extension Ag Community. You can talk with your county director and ask if you can come in and talk once a month. School groups such as classrooms, PTO, school board, and I'm sure there's many other groups. And then 4-H project groups. Maybe you are involved in the livestock project and meet once a month so you could lead a quick 10-minute physical activity warm-up before your meeting. Maybe you are responsible for bringing snacks. Make it a healthy one and provide the group with a recipe and a quick overview of how it's healthy. All of those things can be counted as a healthy living ambassador, so think of ways you can infuse it into what you already have going on, although creating something new is fine too. As an ambassador, you are to spread the good word of healthy living but it needs to be research-based information. In other words, you cannot take your opinion and say, well, this is how I feel and I want everybody else to feel this way. We don't have that luxury and extension. So make sure what you are telling others is coordinated with your 4-H agent so you make sure you are representing your county and UT extension appropriately with research-based information. Related to your teaching role, your job is to provide research-based information to the audience that you are speaking to in whatever learning environment, whether it is in the classroom or a day camp where you want to lead a healthy living walk every morning before it begins. The sky is really the limit on what you can do. The audience you speak to can be any age from preschool to 100. While we like for you to be involved with 4-H aged youth, it is okay to speak with others who do not fall into that category. A preschool might call you and want you to come teach about healthy snacks, or a senior citizens group might want a lesson on physical activity. Grab your supplies and go teach. Those are perfectly fine. You are advocating for healthy living. Also, there is not a prescribed curriculum 
which means that we do not lay a notebook in front of you and say you must teach this. We want you to identify what your county needs and the audience that you are teaching wants. There are lots of resources available and some in your county office. Ask your 4-H agents to see what they already have. The notebooks that you will be receiving with your shirts will have a, a few sample lessons already in there so you have a few to get you started. So by July 1st of 2018, so within about two weeks or so, I would please ask that you could request um, that you could complete this short survey with the following. A picture of yourself, um, and it'll have some questions about yourself, uh, and then things that you're looking forward to as a healthy living ambassador. And the questions it's going to ask you are really simple. How many years you've been in 4-H, maybe what your 4-H project is, and what your favorite food is, etc. This really will not take you more than five minutes. Um, this information is going to be featured in our 4-H newsletter that is known as Ideas, and it comes out each Friday and is sent across the state to our 4-H agents. I have the link here. This is the same as like the report form. You can see the really long one. But the one that says HLA about me is the same link. So when I send the email, all you have to do is click on it. So we have a new Facebook group and Instagram page for those who have accounts on social media platforms. In order to be a part of the Facebook group, you can either request to join or I can add you to the group with the email you use for your Facebook account. Please enter this email into the About Me survey that I just talked about. The Facebook group is there to offer you a resource for talking to other Healthy Living Ambassadors across the state and see what is going on. It's a great place to share ideas that you may run across on the internet and also the things that you are actually doing in your county. And the Instagram page will be similar in that you can send me things you want to share with others and I will post them. Um, also, the report form that you will fill out with the things that you have done uh, might be featured on our Instagram page as well. So be sure to always include pictures. You can see that our Instagram page uh, handle is at healthy underscore living without a G because it has to be southern underscore y'all. And then I've attached a screenshot of our Facebook group and it's Tennessee 4-H Healthy Living Ambassadors. As you have questions about your Healthy Living Ambassador role, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm here to help you be successful. If you do email me, please be sure to copy your 4-H agent on the email so they are aware as to what is going on. As I have additional opportunities and resources, those will come out via email and be shared in our Facebook group. Please be sure to check your email on a regular basis and if you decide to join the Facebook group keep in touch. You never know what opportunities may be available that is only for Healthy Living Ambassadors such as mini grants for $100 so you can do something in your county or going to the Healthy Living Summit that is always in February I'm at the National 4-H Center. So again I appreciate you and your willingness to take this task on to promote healthy living across our state. If I can help you in any way possible, please reach out. Here is my number and my email address. Thank you.